shed that love's a potion that heals the man anytime we cry Welcome to Songwriter's Perspective. I'm your host, John Michael Ferrari, talking about some of the ins and outs of songwriting and the music business, and some of the behind stories of the songs and my life. And also, music producer Pepper J will be speaking with our guest, singer-songwriter Sharon Marie White, and one of our favorite guitarists in Nashville, Dylan Boldly, who introduced us to this fabulous singer, a previous contestant on the NBC's The Voice Kayla Woodson, and later on, the continuing story about my escape from Las Vegas to Highland Springs Resort. Masquerading in the night of a lonesome home. This next song I wrote was something more cryptic, a bit haunting, open for interpretation with a slight hidden meaning of a young man lying in bed, fantasizing about love. Here's Masquerading in the Night. How much love Today, singer-songwriter's guest comes to us from outside of Calgary, Canada. Her lyrics are pure, storytelling with melodies that move the listener. Please welcome music producer Pepper J. interviewing Sharon Marie White. Thank you, John Michael. Welcome, Sharon Marie White, to Songwriter's Perspective. How nice to have you on the show. 
Well, thanks so much for inviting me, Pepper J. Glad to be here. You and John Michael Ferrari met in the Museboat Live Channel, a great site for indie artists to get to know one another. Yes, we sure did. Um, yeah, I think I found Museboat about a year ago, and um, I just I was amazed at the amount of support. And also, um, it was so nice to meet people in the chat and, um, you know, um, give our feedback with each other's songs. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It really is. Uh, how did you get started in music? Oh, gosh. Um, not to date myself, but I've been at this probably for over 40 years. Um, just started out, I wanted to, to play the guitar because I love to sing. So I took guitar lessons when I was a teenager. Um, and then just got that really got the ball rolling. And then I was in a rock band for quite a few years. And in the 90s, I switched to country music. And that's kind of when I found my voice as far as songwriting. I started to write my own songs. Beautiful. Who were your idols when you were a teenager? Um, well, of course, in the rock era, I mean, there was a lot of like Pat Benatar and Hart and stuff like that. But then... Um, but from a little girl, I love Patsy Cline, uh, Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, um, and then for songwriters, uh, probably Lucinda Williams, Mary Chapin Carpenter, and uh, folks like that. Good choices, good choices. Where where do you get your inspiration for writing songs? Well, that is a great question. In fact, I um I went to a couple's house the other day just to have coffee, and I brought my guitar, and I was singing my songs. And they just looked at me, and they were like, where do you get these ideas? <laughs> and I said, you know what? Sometimes it's, it's hard for us to even know as songwriters. I mean, sometimes you'll pick a subject matter, and you'll go, okay, I'm going to investigate this, and I'm going to write about this story. And sometimes I can just be sitting at my guitar playing a few chords, and honestly, I just get words and, and melodies, and, and I go from there. What was your inspiration for your song, Help Me Fly? Well, that was kind of hard to explain because, of course, as I've gotten older, I have lost a lot of people, like, you know, aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and even parents, but I still feel like they're still around me. Um, and that feeling of, you know, when they were here in the real world, they always were so supportive of my music. And so, um, and, and I think it's kind of a tribute to keep their memory alive, that if they were still here, they'd say, keep doing what you're doing, girl. You know, we, we love what you're doing and we believe in you. And so that's kind of what the song is about. Beautiful. Let's let's take a listen to Help Me Fly by Sharon Marie White and Dan Washburn. Life is passing me by They help 
What a wonderful song. I wish you all the best. Uh, I know it's getting a lot of play. Uh, do you write in other genres also? Yes, I do. Um, I love, I really love all types of music, but um, I've written kind of in the folk uh, genre, and I've uh, also loved the blues. So I, um, I'll have a blues single coming out probably in the next year. But, um, yeah, I, I just love all kinds of music, and kind of whatever comes out, comes out. <laughs> do you play any instruments? Yes, I do. I play the guitar. Um, that's my main instrument. Um, a little bit of piano, and I'm learning the mandolin as well. You are calling in from out in the Nowhereville in Canada. Where are you calling in from? Well, we live um, in Alberta, but we are currently on the road uh, with our jobs. So we're in the next province over of Saskatchewan, and we're in a beautiful little park. Um, so that's why I said it. We're kind of out in the boonies right here. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad we had good connection. Where can our audience go to connect with you on all your social media, et cetera? Um, they can go to my website, SharonMarieWhite.com, um, and, and please join my mailing list. And then you'll be notified when I have new music, which I will very shortly have some new music out. Um, I'm also on YouTube, Instagram. Um, come on over on my Facebook music page. I'd love to have you on there. Um, Spotify, Apple, Amazon. And, and I just wanted to say, Pepper J, that, um, you know, as far as the fans and the listeners, even if they, you know, they stream your music or they subscribe to your YouTube channel, Put your songs on a playlist. It all really, really helps us independent artists. It really does. Thank you so much for joining us on Songwriter's Perspective. I wish you all the best. Thanks so much for having me, and take care, everybody. Back to you, John Michael. You're listening to Songwriter's Perspective. I'm your host, John Michael Ferrari. A friend of mine asked if I would sing a song during his wedding ceremony. I asked him, what would you like me to sing? He said, anything. You choose it. There's a lot of good wedding songs out there. But I thought maybe I should write one. I did. And I played it for my friend. He liked it so much, he asked if he could sing the song during the ceremony. And I would just back him up on guitar. And that's what I did. And he did a terrific job. On one of our trips to Nashville, I recorded the song. Here it is, entitled, Paint You a Love Song. I want to paint you a love song Across the sky Sign it where the rainbow Dot it with an eye I want to give you this love song So you won't forget I'm the one who loves you If you haven't noticed yet 
to introduce you to the fabulous voice of Kayla Woodson. Hey all, this is Kayla Woodson. I'm a country singer-songwriter based in Nashville, Tennessee, and you're about to listen to my fun little love song that could. This one's called Crushing. Dreaming when I know I should be sleeping, but you're running through my mind, taking up my time when I shut my eyes, baby. It's that old school rock and roll t shirt and those faded high top sneakers. Yeah, you got that laid back ball cap style, and it's driving me wild. Boy, you got me crushing. Yeah, you got. Your ex-girlfriend, your favorite new band, or that cute thing that you do with your hands when we're flirting. Hey, boy, you make me nervous. You give me tongue-tied. <laughs> you give me butterflies every time. Boy, you got me crushing. Yeah, you got that something. Don't take it much to get my Crush it. 
That was Kayla Wooden with Crush. You're listening to Songwriter's Perspective. I'm your host, John Michael Ferrari. On my last episode, I talked about how Michelle helped me escape from Las Vegas. With $100 and a full tank of gas, I headed out in my 1972 Dodge van for Highland Springs Resort, a few miles outside of Palm Springs. Season didn't begin until May, about six and a half weeks. When I arrived, I went to the main office. The assistant manager was expecting my arrival and showed me to a small cottage where I would be spending the summer while entertaining the guests in the lounge and participating in hay rides and assisting the summer counselors with some of the other game activities. She showed me the kitchen facilities and said there would be plenty of food there. I could serve myself whenever I was hungry. She said since the season wasn't open yet, I probably wouldn't see anybody for the next month, except for a few of the groundskeepers. So basically, I'd be all by myself on 200 acres of beautiful resort property. Highland Springs Resort was similar to the resort in the movie Dirty Dancing, a large hall where people would gather each day for morning breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There were horse stables, although I didn't see any horses, a small lounge where I would be performing, and a main showroom for the major stars. The assistant manager informed me, basically, I'd have run of the place, but don't wander too far at night. There are bear in the area. About after six weeks, I was ready for human contact. I don't think as humans we were meant to be alone for any length of time. And so now the season begins and a new venture starts. And my opportunity to play in the main showroom. I really had no concept or idea what it took to play the main showroom. You see so many professionals like Sinatra, Barry Manilow, Rod Stewart, Dolly Parton, Michael Bublé, and how effortless they make it look. There's a saying in the business, never let them see how hard you're working. It takes a special kind of person to play the main showroom. Years of experience, paying your dues. And you see it over and over again on American Idol, The Voice, how people come from absolute obscurity to stardom so quickly. It can be overwhelming, the difficulties of handling the pressures of success. The more successful you are, the more that is expected from you. The more people are dependent on you, your accountability to show up, and do what you do. Well, that opportunity came one night when the main act was a no-show. In the movies, this is called Your Lucky Break. To go out and show them what you got. In my case, what I didn't got. It wasn't a bad show, but it wasn't a good show. It takes more than having a good voice and nice appearance. But there was someone there in the audience that night who approached me after the show and said, You're good. But you got things to learn, and I can make you better. Hi, my name is Pepper J. Thank you for joining me on Songwriter's Perspective. I'm your host, John Michael Ferrari. Until next time, when I talk more about learning to become a main stage performer. And remember, there's never a stranger in the world. Let's come together, let's come together, let's come together like a rock and